A man who wears the 10 pounds of gold. The nature boy, Ric Flair. You know, I always like to take this opportunity to talk about myself. The 16-time heavyweight champion has arrived. I've got the star and profile like never before. The greatest talker in the history of the business is behind the mic once again. You're talking to the roller wearing diamond ring wearing gift stealing woo, wheel of dealing limousine like jet flying son of a gun woo! This, this is Woo Nation with Ric Flair. I'm the man. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Nature Boy Ric Flair back in this week as the host of Woo Nation, along with my infamous co-host, multi-millionaire, entrepreneur, owner of the Conradison, sometimes referred to as the Mustang Ranch, depending on what day of the week and who's visiting from the in-town or out of town. (laughs) (laughs) Love you, buddy. Hey, so today, uh, Conrad, why don't you lay out what we're going to do? Man, it's WrestleMania season, and we're excited to be back here on Woo Nation. Nate, you have been globe trotting a little bit. You wow. had some extra dates for Roadblock last week, so we apologize for missing a week. And then this week, you've been busy with ESPN again, isn't that yeah. right? They're running me. <laughs> the ESPN thing, 30 for 30, it'll be interesting. You're going to have to come to the premiere in New York in August. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> They've interviewed 29 people, so... That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about it, and I'm excited that WrestleMania season is upon us. Oh, uh, gosh, I know. A lot of requests for this. Uh, people wanted to talk about, they really enjoyed what we did with the Royal Rumble in 92, and we wanted to kind of keep that going with WrestleMania. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into WrestleMania 8 right now. So if, the best way to do this, to kind of follow along with what we're going to do, mm. is yeah. log into the WWE Network and go to the ninth bubble... And that should be at an hour and 11 minutes and 20 seconds in. And when you go to that point, you'll see the Nasty Boys, you'll see Hacksaw Jim Duggan, you'll see Virgil, and you'll think, what the hell's going on? This isn't Ric Flair, but it's about to start. So we'll go ahead and have you press play right now, and Rick and I will go ahead and kick in the commentary from there. So, Rick, this is your first WrestleMania at this point. Uh, They're at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. You had been kind of on the other side of the fence for all the previous WrestleManias, was this something you were excited about, or was it just another show? Oh, no, actually, I was very excited about it. I mean, 70,000 people is pretty exciting, uh, to, uh, pretty pretty exciting opportunity for anybody to perform in front of. And, uh, you know, I knew it was a big deal. It was fun, and uh, as usual, uh, I had the whole family there. And everybody was there, all four of the kids, and uh, um, they had a, had a great time, and uh I saw some friends from college that I hadn't seen in years that live in Indy, and uh, it was phenomenal. And, of course, Randy uh, was a great opponent. Um, I'm never going to consider this one of my great matches, but uh, a lot of people liked it, and I'm happy they did. Um, And uh, the drama building up to it was something I'll never forget. The uh, five days of practicing down in Tampa, uh, when I got the call from J.J., I thought he was out of his mind. And then, of course, the drama and the sad part of it was that was the last time that Liz and uh, um, Randy ever worked together. So it was a big night for me and a sad night for them. They were a great couple and uh, a lot of fun to be with. Um, Sorry it worked out like that, but, um, you know, it is what it is. And uh, life goes on. So here we are, man. God, I was was handsome back then. Holy cow. (laughs) Every night. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. <laughs> so the backstory here, for those of you who didn't see it, was uh, Rick is saying that he had her first, and there were lots of pictures that appeared in the WWF magazine at the time that showed Elizabeth with Rick, and uh, there was lots of evidence with embroidered stuff that had a, an L for Liz and an R that Rick said was for Rick, not Randy. And so that's kind of the backstory, and they're teasing this poster here is a private photo that Rick had that he was going to put on the big screen after he beat Randy up. And that was, of course, insinuating it was a private photo of Liz. Yeah. So, it was, yeah, it was a fun... If I look back, you know, I hadn't, I don't think I've ever watched the match back. Um, 
I've seen clips of you know part of it, but uh, I had forgotten all about this part with the, with Kurt back here backstage. Kurt was a great manager and fun to be with um, all the time. <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> Look at Kurt! <laughs> so, did, did you see that match? Uh, did you buy the pay per view, Conrad? I- Absolutely, yeah. I bought the pay per view, and uh, it was. It, I didn't really understand why the world title match was in the middle of the card and yeah. finished the card. Did you have, you know, any sort of feelings or discussions about that, or did it not really matter? Uh, I, well, we were second to the last, right, or third. You were kind of right in the middle of the show. Okay, could I? You remember Brett and uh, Piper went on after us, and then Hulk and Sid, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't think about anything about it. Actually, you know, um, after all those years of being on last every night, I didn't mind going on early, you know? <laughs> so it's, uh, I, I love being on Raw, but I like being on Seg 5, 6, or 7 rather than Seg 14. <laughs> yeah, I know that first hand. <laughs> those are long days. Yeah, 70, I think 73,000 people. You know, the irony of this, too, which is an interesting side story, is the last day that I was in town doing PR for for the for WrestleMania on behalf of the company was the same day that Tyson got arrested. Really? Yeah, same day. I saw him in the airport coming in, and I, I didn't see him on the way out, obviously because he got arrested and put in jail. But um, that was a tragedy in itself. I mean, th- three I think it was three years out of the man's life. So who knows? You just can't mess around with women, man. You can't trust them. <laughs> yeah, they, they just showed one in the crowd that uh, you couldn't trust, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> look at that robe, man. Hey, that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, you know, most of your robes back then uh, said Nature Boy that Olivia Walker made, but mm-hmm. it seems like when you were in the WWF, did they have you change some to say Ric Flair on them? No, she them? just did that in her own one time. She just, uh, hmm. you know, it's funny because... Um, you can def- definitely, with the exception of a couple that Terry made me, uh, just see the difference in Olivia's work. Um, only because she took so much longer to do it. Right. But um, just, the, you know, the, her, her, her you, well, you can look at that robe, the detail of it and all that. I mean, Incredible. it would take her six months to make one. So um, so I just kept them rolling. I mean, it's like I, every time you get done with one, start on another one for me. That's how I did it because... Um, you know, at that time, uh, Orndorff started to wear them. He, he only ended up buying a couple, but Paul and then Greg Valentine was starting to wear them. So every time they added a Ryan Stone, I added I added a hundred more. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's thinking about it. <laughs> so would this would this have been um, the first time? that uh, your youngest kids would have been to a show? Would this would have been the first time that Charlotte attended the show, or no? Um, this would be, let me think. Um, well, they were 86 and 88, so they were, uh, she was, what, she Ashley would have been uh, four, six okay. years old, and Reed would have been four. Yep, probably the first time. Wow. Macho had a, had a good-looking outfit on, too. Oh, big time! And, and he had just, you know, in the in the more recent years to this, uh, changed from just wearing the short tights, yep. long pants, and then added the top. Mm-hmm. Did he do that for cosmetic reasons after the steroid stuff, or was this just him trying to be different, do something a little different? I think we just him trying to be different. Uh, you know, he he. he um, I'm not sure who made his stuff, but he put uh, he put some uh, money into his uh, his uh, appearance, which yeah. you know. I think it's important. I mean, I, I feel like nowadays people don't do that at all, but um, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, here's what was great because, you know, out of the ring like that, um, this this really got the crowd going. We, yeah. got some, we got some heat there with Kurt. So, And at this point, Kurt is doing the Lloyds of London deal and not working, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> Randy's on a mission. Is that Dave or Earl right there? No, uh, I didn't see. Uh, that's uh, Earl. He'd be a great guest for us one day to have. 
Oh, yes, absolutely. The nice thing about this is, is right after the match, you know, I told you to the first guy to text me was uh, Michael Hayes and said congratulations, you know. Well, back then it would have been a voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to us, we've never really talked about this, but uh, on the show anyway, talk to us a little bit about what the difference is between the WWF ring at the time versus the WCW ring. Oh, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, I think it's, uh, Either four and a half or five feet longer. Really? Yeah, it took me forever to get the the, speed, the timing for the flip on the rope. Right. Wow. Well, um, but once I got it, I was fine. But when I first got there, I missed it a couple of times because I, I, you know, I was just it's like four feet difference. And when you're going across the ring as fast as you can, it's hard to it was hard to figure that out. Did the uh, the different styles of ropes make a difference or not really? No, uh, -uh not really. Ropes are ropes. People don't realize that they're hard. Yeah, I just watched uh, Wrestle last year's WrestleMania back again, and you could see after Sting had kind of been out of the habit of running the ropes. Oh yeah, it was his his under. under yeah. Side. Oh, he would had to be bruised yeah. up. Yeah. I don't guess I really noticed until just now that. It's, uh, the ring is like on a little stage, mm -hmm. so elevated a little higher, I guess. Uh, for for television purposes. So you talked a little bit about you know the pacing of the match and how you and Randy had worked on this. Mm -hmm. um, is it something where he had all of this written down like on a notebook sheet of paper? Yeah, he, he, he sure did. Yeah, that was his way of doing. It. I mean, the Ultimate Warrior did the same thing. You know, and I just, I had to adjust to it. I just, you know, me, I was used to walking out and hearing the crowd. I mean, I would know walking in the building if we had, if we had any heat or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. How, uh, how hot do you think this was as far as the storyline with the Liz aspect? Well, with him, it was big heat. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he didn't like it at all. You know what I mean? When did you and Liz uh, take those photos? Is that something y'all had planned out months and months ahead of time, or was that? Oh, we we did them each week. We, uh, the last ones we did in the bathing suit, and that with her was at uh, Bobby Heenan's house. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then we shot some, and I flew home, and I got there, and they called me to go back because Randy decided he didn't like them. So it was it was a long. It, it, I want to tell you it was the most positive experience of my life, but it was. You know, you don't ever want to be involved in someone else's personal problems, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I certainly wasn't, you know, involved with her on any level. Um, but it just, it just was uncomfortable. But, you know, as you see at the end, it was, a, it was a, the last time they worked together. So this... Um... I can't get over how handsome I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a couple of chicks in the crowd who couldn't get over it either. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, I'm curious. You know, you talked about maybe this wasn't the most positive experience. Do you think a lot of that was, I mean, did you have any difficulty working with Randy and WCW, or was this just a moment in time because he had so much personal stress? Well, no, I didn't, there was no difficulty working with him here. <clears throat> I'm just saying... <clears throat> It could have been a lot more fun. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I've never complained. Well, working with Randy was a night off. He very easy. Um, no, what I was what I was saying is that I, I could feel the tension between the two of them. Sure. There was no tension with me. I, I actually really enjoyed working with Randy. So, talk me through kind of your methodology for standard match when we had steamboat on he kind of talked about how you built the match and this kind of seems um you know very uh timely because back then maybe even more so than now the heels kind of lead the match and so you're getting in a lot of offense mm -hmm. getting a lot of heat on him but do you have like a formula for how you used to put your matches together 
Um, well, it all depends on the individual, you know. But with Randy, we didn't do a lot of wrestling. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and the only match I've ever seen him, I guess we would do a lot of wrestling if you call false finishes, uh, was the one with uh, with the steam mode that he had. Because Randy was a, like a brawler, you know what I mean? So I just, you know, treated Randy, you know, like a guy that he wanted to, he wanted to you know, go toe-to-toe and, you know, punch and kick and all that. So that's kind of the way I worked with him. We didn't do a lot of wrestling. You didn't see any headlock takeovers in this match. But it, it was designed... Uh, that there should there should have been enough heat, which there was, that we didn't have to do that. Right. By the way, did you see Charlotte's interview last night? It was fantastic. Unbelievable, huh? I and wanted to throw that in before I forgot own. to mention it. She's really coming to her own as, yeah. a, uh, as a bad guy. Yeah, she's really, I'm really on fire. So proud of her. Boom. Best punch in the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, not everybody who's listened to the uh, show today has heard all of our episodes. You had a great story in one of our very first episodes about how you first learned how to do a punch. Can you tell mm-hmm. everybody how you did that again? What the yeah, Ray Stevens told me to hang a string from the ceiling and to hit it as hard as I could, and when it wouldn't move, I, I would, I'd be able to learn how to punch. It, I had been able to learn how to punch, but it's hard, you know. But once you learn it, it's uh, it, it stays with you. This was really easy. See, just the trading with them like this. Yeah. That's what guys, they don't, you, know, you never see this anymore. It's funny. It's always so fast, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why do you think that is? What, is it just... Crash TV now? No, I just, I don't think the guys, they understand that they can, um, boom. Um, that, you know, sometimes you're trading punches and then, you know, it it doesn't actually hurt for the heel to cut the bay face off in a situation like that. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, but here, I'll give you an example. Uh, he just gave me a neck breaker, right? Right. Well, nowadays, one of the kids would be up flying over the top rope already. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if it's important, and you know, this is where Randy was really good. Randy could fire, and we we saved a lot of the big bums for later on. Um, this is something you've never seen before, right? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. He said, I can't do it off a second rope. I said, well, I'm not going. Do you climb up here? <laughs> <laughs> it looked a lot better doing that, too, didn't it? Absolutely. Classic flair bagging off. Yep. So do you remember, like, uh, at any point in your matches with Randy, since he kind of liked to script everything so much? Mm-hmm. Do you remember him ever being very frustrated if you missed a spot? No. No, he wasn't like that. He just, yeah, at this point in time, I think he was probably just thinking about Liz coming out, right? Yep. It almost worked. Yeah. I did that yesterday at uh, Center Stage for ESPN. Did you really? No. <laughs> Kurt's starting to get worried. It's not looking good. You know, the only time I ever did this, I was copying Randy. He wasn't working on a show that I was at. I broke my ankle. Are you serious? Yeah, because I landed on a uh, on a TV cable. Uh oh! I feel like somebody just uh, went to the entertainment aspect. Oh no! He's been lacerated. Uh oh! So there's a lot of talk online that uh, at the time 
Vince had put a put a mandate down that you guys weren't allowed to You're, bleed. And that's true. And I got in big trouble for this. I just did him a favor because he asked me to. Macho asked you to do it? Uh, Macho, yeah. yeah. And I walked back. I told you the story at the end of the match. And... Uh, Vince, I thought he was calling me to the room to say, hey, great, you know, good match and all that. But he, he called me and said, uh, every time you get this close to being the best, you do something stupid. <laughs> that was, that was, that's what I got afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> but at least I made Macho happy, so. Well, it really added to the match, you know. I mean, considering what the backstory was. Oh, yeah. Being his wife and, you know, you guys doing more punching and kicking and brawling mm -hmm. more so than headlock takeovers, like you said. Yeah. It makes sense that there should be blood for this. Well, that was mm. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's funny because I don't remember the crowd now, but obviously they were into it pretty good. Do you think fans were more fun to work for? to work in front of back then than they are now? Um, I think it's about the same. I think that, uh, that um, you know, the lighting makes a big difference because a lot of fans that make a lot of noise and, and when it's darker, like it raw. Right. Uh, like it's pretty lit up right here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And um, that was great. That got a big pop. Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, you know, if you can see, it's pretty lit up right there. And, um, you know, sometimes the fans are a little bit uh, um, shyer about really going crazy and cheering. Real. So this is where we thought, um, you know, it's. I just think that uh, wrestling fans, oh, that was great right there. Um, you know, there's always going to be some that are a little bit more shyer about situations. So how did, uh, what was the go-to way of making a foreign object like this? Just tape? Uh, just a metal tape, yep. It's classic cheat uh, heel stuff, cheating to win. Who would you have still been in touch with from the Crockett days here in 92? Oh, I talked to David all the time still back then. Really, they were, you know, they were in such disarray at this point in time that none of them were talking to each other anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, did he ever consider, David, I mean, ever doing anything with Vince? I don't think so, no. I just saw David last weekend. See, th that, that's the kind of stuff that that's really good heat right there with Kurt doing that. Yeah. Nobody's seen him. Here she comes. Well, when she came out the door, I'll tell you, that, that's Dave Hebner there. The place went crazy. Yeah, the, the Shane McMahon intro right here on the left. Yeah. He starts moving his hands almost like he's a mom in an invisible yeah. box. Is the yeah. Thing on the Look how young he was there. Yeah. Who's that in the back? JJ. No, that wasn't JJ. Isn't it? Oh, that's, um, I kind of can't think of his name, from Toronto. Relay? Huh? Uh, Renee? No, 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 no. Um, um, yeah, no, uh, what, uh, another guy. He's from Toronto, yeah. His, he wrestled, he and his brother wrestled. Randy took that really well. Yeah, he did. Th this was, yeah. I think he did this better than almost anybody. Mm -hmm. Man, how good looking is Liz there, huh? Well, she needs blonde hair, but we'll take it. There, there's Chief J. Strongbow. I love Earl's head on his wibble. Like, he doesn't know what to look at. Who's that? I love the little uh, reaching back to grab perfect and get a little more yeah. leverage on the... Yeah, there's, there's none of that now. Isn't that funny? All the stuff we got away with in the old days, which I thought it made it very exciting. We, it's, it's not allowed anymore. It's a good chain. 
He was a handsome dude, huh? I love slapping him in the figure four. That's awesome. You were doing that 13 years later at uh, Triple H. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, both of you guys covered in blood, slapping him in the figure four. By the way, what a great picture, a little behind-the-scenes picture of you talking to Triple H when he's got the belt on. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that cool? I love the kick to break it up. That was awesome. This is what I remember most about this match. Randy hopping around on one leg. Well, that's where the drama is, you know. Absolutely. He really sold that well. Talking to Liz. That's awesome. So, were, were you, back then, back before this was as much of a television company as it is now, were you guys, you know, trained on working towards the hard cam at all times with WWE? No, uh, if we were, I don't remember that. It, it's more, it's uh, a bigger part of it now than it ever has been. Just noticed that you moved him from one corner to another there, and I was curious: did you do that because Liz was there or because of the camera? But obviously, because of Liz. Mm. I think this is the finish here. No, oh, that's it. That was it. Look at that crowd. Yeah, they went crazy. Now the big payoff, there's Liz. The promo beforehand that you did in the back, I know we had the sound down because we were just talking. Yeah. Talked <laughs> about her moist lips. And I don't know why, but as a kid and as an adult. What did I say? Me up. You said you couldn't wait to kiss her on those moist lips. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just cracks me up. That's my line to Fifi every day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the big payoff that everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> I just took a bump for her. <laughs> I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <sighs> yeah, that left uh, Hulk and Sid with a lot with a lot to follow. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. You know, they had teased this was the uh, the last time we would see Hulk Hogan, and they brought back the Ultimate Warrior. They really tried to pile on mm -hmm. uh, anything they could to make more interest in that. Which I think a lot of fans still go back and say, why didn't they just do Flair versus Hogan? It was the real dream match. You know, if you got any of the after mags back in the day, I mean, it was the one everybody wanted to talk about. Who was the real world champion? And that's even the way he came in, but didn't do it at WrestleMania. Hmm. Yeah, I look back on it. The match is better than I remember it being. Yeah, I thought it was real good. And we had a lot of folks who... Specifically, you know, of all the matches that we could cover, we wanted to talk about mm. this one. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it, Randy left us way too soon. You know, he had just found happiness, just gotten married again. And then to have something like that happen is really sad. What do you think the, uh, the real beef with him and McMahon at the end was? I have no idea. You know, there are just some, some questions you don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I thought Randy played this part real well too, where he was just, you know, crazy right now. Yeah. I he, he, he kept it going. Yeah. I'd forgotten this. Yeah. His promo backstage was good too. I mean, yeah. he, he was all in on this. Uh, well, that's the end of WrestleMania eight. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break right now. And when we come back on the other side of the break, Rick, we're going to do another WrestleMania. This one is going to be WrestleMania 18. So we're going to fast forward 10 years. Rick had went back to WCW, finished up there, came in as part owner of the WWF, and then all of a sudden, uh, it's time for WrestleMania to roll around. He needs an opponent, and The Undertaker is there. 
So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to WrestleMania 18. Thank you. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. Do you need to make money now? That's right. The Nature Boy is once again talking about Uber. You can drive with Uber using your own car and start making money now. Uber is a smartphone app. Uber lets you make extra money on your schedule. Whenever you need to make extra money, just turn on the app and drive. Go to drivewithuber.com to sign up for free. You can do it right now on your phone. Answer a few basic questions about you and your car and then get approved. Now you are ready to drive and make money. Start enjoying the flexibility of working when you want, earning extra money on your schedule. Sign up to drive with Uber today. Go to drivewithuber.com. That's drivewithuber.com. Drive woo, with Uber, U-B-E-R, dot com. Woo! All the ladies love Slick Rick. You know they love Woo Nation. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. This is the Nature Boy Ric Flair talking to all the small business owners out there. FreshBooks is an easy-to-use cloud accounting software that helps small business owners get organized, save time invoicing, and get paid faster. Damn, maybe CBS should start using this. <laughs> FreshBooks help you get organized and get paid. Forbes magazine calls FreshBooks incredibly user-friendly. Helps you grow your business. On average, customers double their revenue in the first 24 months. Mobile apps for iPhone and iPad and Android. FreshBooks is offering my listeners a free 30-day unrestricted trial, no credit card required. Go to freshbooks.com slash flair. Enter flair in the how did you hear about us section when you sign up. Woo! The greatest talker in the history of the business is behind the mic once again. This is Woo Nation with Ric Flair. All right, so we're back on Woo Nation with WrestleMania 8 in the books. We're going to fast forward now to the next WrestleMania that Ric participated in. It was 10 years later. Uh, This one's taking place in Canada. The last one was in Indianapolis. Uh, We're in Toronto for this one at the Sky Dome. It's 2002. Uh, Rick had just been back with the WWF a short time, and in storyline, he is part owner, uh, but he's got to build towards something for WrestleMania. The Undertaker is going to be his chosen opponent, and we're going to pick it up on the network. So if you're in the network, go to the 11th bubble of WrestleMania 18, and that'll be at 1 hour, 1 minute, and 23 seconds in. So you want to go to 1 hour, 1 minute, and 23 seconds in. It's the 11th bubble on WrestleMania 18. Do you want to go ahead and press play now? And when you do that, you'll see that Kane is going for a choke slam with Kurt Angle. And right after this, they're going to start getting uh, the video package together for The Undertaker and Ric Flair. So talk to us a little bit, Rick, about how this match came about in real life. Because I know you've told the story before that when you came back, uh, the understanding was you weren't going to wrestle. Ever. And that was in November, and by January... I was in the Royal uh, at the Royal Rumble against uh, Vince in Atlanta. in Atlanta, and I was just shell shocked because I wasn't ready. If that makes sense. Um, I mean, I was I was I believe I was overwhelmed, but I was having that opportunity. But in terms of my self confidence, I was just I wasn't ready, and uh, so I got through that. And the next thing I know, Hunter walks out to me at Raw about a month later and says. Um, um, Taker uh, wants to work with you at Mania. I said, what? I mean, I was in shock, right, that he would be. And he said, yeah, Taker wants to work with you at WrestleMania. And I said, my God. I said, I mean, I mean I'm overwhelmed. That's great. But, um, see, things are different now. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't imagine that at this WrestleMania there will be hoes undressing at WrestleMania. <laughs> the Godfather going in, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. That's going to happen. Oh, he had the be- he had the best locker room in the business. This, uh, this looks like a Thursday at the Conradison so far. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. 
Yeah. How the, great of a guy is, uh, is Hurricane? Oh my God, the best. And I just saw uh, Papa last Saturday at um, um, in New York at that signing. He's excited to go in, and uh, here he comes. Look at there, the American yeah. Badass. Yeah. Now, how did you like the American Badass version of the Undertaker, Rick? Uh, I like the the original Undertaker better, but he pulled this off too. He, you know, he just said I got tired of it, and uh, you know, he likes motorcycles. It, it, it didn't change the persona of him. I mean, he, he didn't change his work or anything. He just, uh, you know, changed the look a little bit, and uh, he just, uh, he was great. So in storyline here, uh, you're part owner, and I guess uh, you did not want The Undertaker to win, so you interfered in the No Way Out yep. match. Yep. He starts threatening you backstage yep. and challenging you to a match, and you mm. just keep pushing it off and saying yeah. no. Uh, yeah. So they start to kind of tease a little bit. There's Arn in the background. Yeah. He becomes an integral part to the build. Oh, Arn was a big part in the match. Something, I, I just watched this last night for the first time since it happened. There he is attacking Arn. Mm -hmm. And in storyline, of course, the idea is Rick won't fight me, so I'm going to beat up his best friend and make him yeah. fight me. How great did that look? Mm. Big boot, blood, everything. Great. No, I'm saying a lot of work went into this angle. And, uh, you know, then he beats up David, my son, too, remember? Yeah, I had totally forgotten yeah. about yeah. this until I saw it again. Yeah, he beat fight. David after this shot. Yeah. With him sitting down, that's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. They put a lot of work into this thing. Yeah, I know David uh -huh. was Dave was was just happy as, as as he could be to be involved. Look at there, you're fired up right there. That's the Ric Flair everybody loves. <laughs> everybody loves. It's important <laughs> to remember, and and I know you you probably get tired of this, but oh, I love punching the fan. Uh, at this point, this is 2002, so you're like, what, 53, 54 years old? Um, 2002, well, I was 59 in 2008, so tell me. I'm not good at math, remember? <laughs> 13 years in high school. <laughs> this yeah, is a press conference. Did y'all really film that at Titan Towers? Yeah, yeah. That, they, they, I've told that story. I was at Ashley's... Uh, volleyball tournament in Indianapolis and the jet picked me up. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was one of those things where they put a camera in the plane and see what I was going to do with the flight attendants. <laughs> hilarious. Hit the truth. And they flew me in and, and just for this press conference. And so in storyline here, to kind of catch you up and give you the context, the idea is he is a co-owner with Vince McMahon mm -hmm. and Linda asked, do you have any intention of continuing to pursue this feud with The Undertaker, and Rick said, absolutely. So because they were going to have a match at WrestleMania, he had to relinquish control of the company, and then they would revisit it after WrestleMania. So now Vince is trying to make sure that Rick is done and gone for. So instead of just a traditional match, they made it a street fight uh, to allow you know other aspects of violence to be included in the match. Yeah. Was this the only time David was featured like this on WWE TV? What's that? Was this the only time that David was featured on WWE? Yeah, you know, he had a, a number of tryouts. When I, you know, it's easy for me to say that he didn't have a good opponent in tryouts, but I, I, I don't know what the deal was there. When David was trying, there was so much talent there then um, that um, it was just a different situation. And um, I just think that he, he came in at the wrong time. Um, because it, we, they were just loaded at that point in time. Yeah, so. this WrestleMania card was unbelievable. I mean, yeah. the opening match was Van Damme versus yeah. uh, William Regal. Yeah. That was the opening match. Yeah. This is cool right here, huh? This is super cool. Yeah. And, you know, maybe not the coolest song in the world now, but at the time, Limp Biscuit Rollin' was a really mm -hmm. big-time song, and that's what yeah. the checker came out to. And It was kind of cool that somebody was using... Know, regular popular music. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, I, I want to make everybody <clears throat> aware of the, on the podcast that he is by far your favorite wrestler to hang out with. Is that is that accurate? Uh, yeah, he is uh, <laughs> way more fun than I ever imagined. Yeah, and that Austin be that Austin's number two after our our, our bout last week. When was that? Two weeks ago, when you had to <laughs> drive home to Birmingham and come back or two. <laughs> <laughs> good lord, it was a good time. <clears throat>
So I noticed last night when I watched this again for the first time in a long time that Charles was in the ring. Did you specifically request Charles for your big matches when you could get him? I've never had that kind of stroke. I never requested anybody. I requested Tommy Young when I was with NWA. Canada is flare country. How great yeah. is that? Well, I'm doing a Comic Con there. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> It's a great market. Got with that thing the other night, which which you watched with um, uh, Charlotte and um, yeah, Roadblock. Yeah, Nat, Natty was just phenomenal. So, it, it to me, it really went to show that you know Dave Meltzer wrote about it in the Observer this week that Natalia has to be one of the most underutilized talents on the entire roster. Did he? He wrote that. Yeah. Well, they pitched that she wore the Bret Hart thing, right? And then she um. The T-shirt with Brett and Owen, and then of course she, um, 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 we uh, in uh, Charlotte's promo, she mentioned that the Maple Leafs hadn't won and yeah. won't win a, uh, um, and won't win a um, um, Stanley Cup this year it's because for the first time in I don't know how long, there is nobody from Canada going to the Stanley Cup. Even to the playoffs, not one team. So, yeah, this match, this got off to a real good start. I probably blew up three times right in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's similar to the Macho Man one. Yeah. You guys are just brawling right away. Yeah. But he, I mean, you can see he just sold for me fabulously. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I was noticing, you know, the way you're hitting him with some of these punches, so he's reacting like you're damn Mike Tyson. Yeah. There's a lot of respect there. No, he, he's great. I mean, you know how I feel about him personally. Yeah, he's like, I mean, he doesn't sell a lot of people like that, period. So I feel very privileged. Actually, every time I worked with him, when I did quite a few house shows with him, it was it was just phenomenal. Look at that. Every punch. Yeah. You know, I, I just saw him again this week, and he's got he's, his back is driving him crazy with back spasms. So... Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but this week they released a video of him doing like a 40-inch box jump and then uh, yeah. deadlift of 500 pounds. Yeah, deadlifting 500? Yeah. Yeah, well, I believe it. Uh, in, in in this time frame now? Yeah, today. Correct. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you something. The guy, you know, who can jump over the top rope like that, like he has all those years? Man, he looks, I mean, and, you know, I, I we hung out with him a few weeks ago in Nashville, mm -hmm. and in real life, just if you didn't know who that was, that is a big, jacked-up dude. Oh, are you kidding me? You know, just in regular yeah. street clothes, he looks mm -hmm. like a monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to have worked with him when I was like 35 or something like that where I could have really given him a match, but this worked out pretty good. I, I, I just, that's, it's hard to explain how you, bad not having self-confidence can make you feel. Um, yeah, let's talk about that because you've you've kind of hinted at that in the future that you weren't really feeling like yourself, and I know there's one spot in the. Oh, match I was here. so nervous before this match; it's scary. I, I I messed up one spot, and he reeled me back. We'll we'll talk about when it comes up. And you know, he just said, "You got it here." I think it's right here. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah. So did he ask to work with you? Yes. Um, yes, he did. That's. I mean, I was I was just thrilled. I never dreamed I would even be in that spot again because I, when I told him I'd come back, what was it, I was never going to wrestle. And then I ended up, which obviously will be part of my legacy, wrestling all those, all those matches. And I missed this one, right? So he comes and gets me. He goes, "Hey, kid," <laughs> he goes, "You're going to make it this time." And then the big boot. Here he goes. <laughs> I loved it. Here he is, like 35 years old, saying, "You got it." <laughs> Watch, watch the boot. Boom. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. So, hey, I'm curious. I'm probably not supposed to ask. Not quite, oh. not, not, not quite as fast over the top as I used to be. <laughs> All of a sudden, he has a scratch on his cheek. Is that from somebody's tape on their finger? I, I don't know. It could be. You know, this is where he superplexed me 
off the top rope here, which got a huge yeah. response. I think this is one of your better matches that I think is maybe just lost. He had so many good ones. But, I mean, for this time period, this was a really good match. I thought it was pretty good, yeah. I mean, it, it certainly wasn't. I was I was thrilled. Are you kidding me? He can really work. I mean, look at him punch. I mean, the guy, is, he's got it all. There's a lot of talk about Charles on the Internet this week about um, – you know, when Neville was hurt in the ring and he didn't mm. notice right away. Was there any talk about that that you saw back then? I didn't see that injury to Neville. And I you know, I, I, I saw the match. He did it on a slide, on a baseball slide. Of all the stuff he does, and uh, has he had to have surgery, have they said yet? You know, I'm not sure. I should know that. but I'll... Yeah. Um, okay. Of all the things he does, you know, and the acrobatic stuff and all the flips and all the, that stuff, he did it on a baseball slide and uh, fractured his ankle and his shin. There's JR. So this is a different time uh, than what we just watched, the last WrestleMania, because there's a lot of blood on this show. So mm -hmm. uh, whatever you know, ban was on uh, juice, as they say, at the time was gone by this period. Mm -hmm. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, I learned my lesson. I wasn't doing anything without asking. <laughs> yeah, I so. just realized you wore red in your last WrestleMania and then again mm -hmm. here. Was that something I think you even Well, did. my my two favorite were red and blue. Okay. I mean, I had all kinds of different robes, but I like red and blue. And then as I got older, I tried to find something that made me look better. And that that's why I started wearing black all the time. <laughs> <laughs> black makes you look skinnier. <laughs> You don't have to tell a fat guy that. I know that. I got a lot of <laughs> Boom. So we were talking a little bit about, you know, your self-confidence issues at the time. And was that mostly just from the WCW time or? Yeah, just WCW. They just got, wore me down, you know. Just if you, if, you tell you, if you tell you long enough that nothing's, if they tell you long enough that you're not good at something, sooner or later, it's going to sink in a little bit, and I let, I let it get to me. But Mark, Mark, if you look at this, take it really lets me whack him, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Boom. So by comparison, let's compare, you know, the, the preparation for this match versus the Randy one. How much of this would you guys have mapped out beforehand compared to Randy's? No, just that, just that day. Uh, he and I and the Hayes and uh, Arn. Yeah, Mike was the agent on this match. And Arn, of course, as you'll see later on, comes in here and does it. What, what, he, what he did was the place blew as loud as I've ever yeah. heard a building go. I, I, uh, I watched it last night, and, you know, this tells you what a fan I am. When, when that spot you're talking about happens, I got chill bumps. Like, everybody bought it. Everybody believed. Oh, my God, they did it. Yeah. This is the spot you were talking about earlier, yeah. Yeah, this is a long ride down. I right, said, so let's do something that nobody else is doing tonight. When was the last time you took one of those at this point? It had to have been a long time, right? I know you took a lot of these in the 80s. I took a lot of them from Sting, you know, and uh, Steamboat. But um, when was the last time I did one of these? I was probably with him. Because you don't trust a lot of guys, you know, but to go up on that top rope right there, you know, we're pretty damn high right now. Watch at this. his height, too? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Boom. <laughs> that is a big bump. Oh, they blew on that. Do you ever have any sort of uh, major injury from a top rope superplex? No. Knock on wood. How this is, this is cool right here. He wasn't beat me, remember? Yeah, I love that. Oh, the forearm digging in. That's awesome. I'm going to miss the American badass the more I watch this. <laughs> yeah, see, it, it, it was hard not to like the character. You know, it, at that point in time, is he started talking a lot more, too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which I think he wanted to do. This is the thing. That this, this movie does right here is phenomenal. Oh, I thought he was going to do it off the air. He does. He does. 
Yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he tells me it was still. <laughs> I'm, I'm dreading this. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> okay. Well, you'd rather take it on um, on your back than on your chest, right? I don't know. <laughs> when you weigh 290 pounds, it doesn't matter where you take it. <laughs> uh, we did have a hell of a match here, Jesus. This was a, a really stacked card. I mean, mm-hmm. the same card had Rock and Hogan. Oh, man, and, and that just tore the joint down. I love the mm-hmm. subtle picking your hair up, not taking yeah. it down. The speed of the match is a lot different than what you see mm-hmm. on the current show. So at this point, you guys would have um, probably just laid out a couple of spots and then uh, the finish and then the time, right? Is that how you would go into the match, or was there more planning than that? No, you know, with he and I, we just talked out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, we had an outline, but it's, you know, I, I had worked with him a lot in the 90s, so we were really familiar with each other. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Charles probably has an earpiece in, and he's getting time cues, right? Probably, yep. I can't know. I don't know if they had him that time or that, where they were coming from the announce stand. I'm getting my ass kicked there. I don't know. What the hell? Yeah, let me be super corny. I watched this last night, and... Uh, Here goes the big rope. No, you, you spoil it. Huh? You spoil it. Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I just I said you forgot to do the rope thing, you know, because it normally does it early in the match. Yeah. They love this. Yeah, this is his trademark people. stuff. To be as big as he is. It's a big bump for a big Yeah, guy. it is. He's a working fool. I mean, really put that in context. You know, other guys his height, Kevin Nash and mm-hmm. the like. When do you see them Never. take that type of... Yeah, exactly. And that's not crapping on Kevin. It's just saying... No, no. Yeah, what a commitment he had to that. He was really ahead of his time, too. I mean, he's wearing uh, UFC-style gloves there, and this mm-hmm. is 2002. Yeah. Would the uh, payoffs for a WrestleMania like this in the middle of the card been reminiscent to what you got at WrestleMania 8, or because it WrestleMania 8 was a title match, would that have been significantly higher? Uh, well, the, the difference is, remember, this is, this is in Canada. And so I, I at that time, we got paid in Canadian dollars. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, I actually made more money at wrestling Randy than I did in this match. So on a big show back when pay per view was a thing like this, mm-hmm. would you get uh, a pay uh, your WrestleMania payday at the show, or would it be months later once the pay per view revenue came in? Yeah, a couple after the pay pay per view revenue came in. And is that normally like a, a two or three or how many month turn is that? Do you think? Um, you know, I don't really remember. I'd say a two month turnaround. Okay. Um. You know, they actually were doing me a favor. I just would have spent it faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is great. Something you just don't see anymore. You know, both guys bleeding like that. and In the middle of the card, too. Yeah. You see, he, he just sells. He sold the crap out of stuff for me. That's what got the match over. Because nobody thought I could, you know, could be able to do anything with him. Right. But when he when he let me get him down, he let me get on him really good. Classic Ric Flair stuff here. <laughs> they blew on this. Right. So we're back then. Uh, you know, we've all heard about the WrestleMania after parties, and I've been privileged enough to go to one with you. What was the atmosphere like after a big WrestleMania like this? Oh, phenomenal. It was phenomenal. 
It was absolutely phenomenal. This is one of my favorite parts of working with him. Um, and it, I mean, it's, it's, it, until you've been there and really experienced it with him, because he's selling for me big time right now, but when he lays down, it, 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 look at the crowd. I mean, it is, yeah. they never believed I was going to beat him, but he, when he went down like that, Oh, and then sitting up. Yeah, look at <laughs> <laughs> How phenomenal is that? Yeah. Who has the worst choke slam to take? Who's hurt the most? Uh, it's not his. He always tells me I take it the worst. <laughs> <laughs> he said I'm heavy. <laughs> so even in this match, like, were you so, you know, like, uh, self-conscious of yourself that, you, you didn't even think in the middle of the match this was a good match, or once you're in the body. Oh, no, once I got going, I felt like it was okay, but I just leading up to it, I just, the anxiety of not, you know, of feeling so much. I mean, to be in that position, I just had to come through. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you can't be given an opportunity to wrestle this guy and not come through, and I just didn't know whether I had it or not. You know what I mean? Okay, so we're getting to the really, really cool part of the match. Boom. Is that the best spine buster yep, Arnie of all time? Gave? They thought I had him. <laughs> I, yeah, I did too. <laughs> so to put it in context for everybody he just, watching, the streak, he, he, he just nails iron, pounds iron. It's, it's for the heck of a production. So if uh, Taker beats you here, he goes to ten and zero. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of in the middle of the streak here. That's Von Buster. <laughs> hey, t- hey, tell me, Arn Anderson can't work, man. Oh, he's the best. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who's been beat up more than me and Arn in the history of the business. <laughs> he's got Arn in this. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you guys took big boots like champs, man. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Arn's bleeding, Rick's bleeding, Undertaker's bleeding. Charles should get in on the action. Yeah. I think we're getting close to the finish here. Yeah, this I screwed this up right here because I thought he was going to give me the other one. Pile driver. Yeah. Because I wanted the tombstone, and he they they they'd outlawed the tombstone, so I just thought we'd do it anyway because that this is his finish. This is what they look at him. So. Talk us through that. Uh, the planned finish was the last ride power bomb. Mm-hmm. You thought he was going to do a tombstone. He didn't do it. And did did you call it right there? It's like tombstone, and he did it. Yeah, yeah. I said just do your tombstone. You know what I mean? Because I didn't get up high enough when he pulled me up. Yeah. So it would have looked like shit. So he just did that, and nobody nobody got mad. I mean, I did. I've never worried about him giving that to me. And it looks like it kills you if you look at that back in slow motion. No, it looked like your head hit on that one. Yeah. For real. Yeah, no, he's he's a phenomenal. I can't say enough about him. I know. <laughs> it just beat up the ring. Look at poor Charles. <laughs> the Charlotte crew just got the shit beat out of him. <laughs> That's phenomenal. I know. Arn looked at me and said, "We need a beer for this man." <laughs> I walked back to the curtain, and Jack lands and said, "You still got it, you old bastard." <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So there it is, The Undertaker's 10-0, and 0, and we have carried you through two WrestleMania moments with Ric Flair, WrestleMania 8 and 18. There's that Spine Buster again, the best mm-hmm. Spine Buster of all time. Of, uh, of all time. That big boot sets up the big finish. Look at this in slow motion. It really does look like your head hits. Oh, yeah. Well, Rick, after seeing those two matches, are you more in the mood for WrestleMania now? Oh, I'm in such a mood. I'm I'm just, believe it or not, being a part of the show each week now for the last couple months has been phenomenal, and 
watching the buildup for all the matches. Um, and, of course, you know, going there with uh, Charlotte and seeing that she's just in a special place and not only in the wrestling business right now, but in, in life period. It's a great, great honor. Well, they had the Arnold Classic last week in Columbus.